is absolutely imperative to have community empowerment when we work towards decriminalisation, when we address violence, when we address the other human rights violations that sex workers face, and to ensure that sex workers are standing up and a part of the HIV response that affects their communities. The uh, Lancet series up until this point have focused on key populations. Uh, several years ago we focused on injection drug use populations and then um, last conference was men having sex with men and this is a focus on HIV and sex work. It's actually the first time that the guest editor panel uh, for the Lancet has included a sex worker as an activist as well as a researcher and she is an author as well and we're particularly proud of that concept which is nothing about Without us, without us. Yeah, full inclusivity and full embracing of human rights and social justice. I was the first author on the second paper which is looking at all the available evidence for HIV prevention methodologies specifically for female sex workers around the world. We very, very uh, carefully described throughout the second paper that this can only be done with sex worker involvement, sex worker agreement, uh, in making sure that they're part of the design, they're part of the implementation, and that there really is a strong community mobilization empowerment component. We do need to have a tailored combination prevention approach. And this needs to in include structural, behavioral, and biomedical interventions with the full support and uh, involvement of female sex workers themselves to ensure that we do it in a way that meets their needs. The paper that I worked on um, is called Human Rights Violations Against Sex Workers, Burden and Implications for HIV, and the lead author is Michelle Decker. We did the paper because we felt that a lot of the discussion in the media, but also um, in political realms around human rights violations of sex trade is happening very unmoored from rigorous evidence. And so what we did is a comprehensive review of over 800 studies, most of them primary data published in the past five years, looking at human rights violations against sex workers. One of the major take-homes from this article is that we need to advance decriminalization and as we see in paper one in the Lancet, it also pays dividends in terms of infections averted. But we also need to address harmful, repressive or discriminatory policies and practices. So we need all three ultimately, but in contexts where decriminalization might be impossible, there's still meaningful change that can be achieved by, for example, uh, working in partnerships with sex workers and police to reduce raids, to reduce police violence, and we've seen some of those partnerships happen in places like Poland or Kenya. Well, this paper focused on the structural determinants of HIV infection among female sex workers globally and it attempted to determine what kinds of structural interventions could be introduced that would have the greatest impact on reducing HIV incidence among sex workers and clients around the world. In an environment where HIV is criminalized or sex work is criminalized, it makes it very difficult for women to have control over their sexual transactions. So if you create safer spaces for sex work where managers have, have um, um, policies where they can promote safety and um, where there's a better lighting, where clients sign in at the door, where there's um, cameras. Changing the laws, having legislative and policy reform would be critical for these environments to really succeed. The subject of the paper I contributed to is on community empowerment, which is um, how we engage with sex worker communities and shift the power from organizations towards the communities themselves so that we have community-led approaches, community-led services rather than things being imposed upon the community. If you invest in the community, you get an approximately 30 percent um, uh, decrease in the odds of HIV infection. You get between 25 and 50 percent decrease in the odds of SCI infection and you get a three times increase in the likelihood of condom use within sex work settings. The whole kind of weight that the Lancet brings to the scientific discourse will help to provide the sort of political space that we need to create so that governments will shift resources towards community-led organisations as sex workers, so that sex workers are no longer 13 and a half times more likely to acquire HIV than any other women anywhere, that, that we really start to achieve zero discrimination, zero new infections and zero deaths within the sex worker community.